So today we're going to be discussing the anatomy of the eyelid. So this is the second video in the ophthalmology series. And as you can see here, I've drawn the eyelid here with the eye over here. And um, here's the eyelid. And here would be kind of like a cut cross section of how it would appear. Because um, this is the eyelid, here are the eyelashes. Okay. So before we look at this diagram, let's look at this one over here. So this layer right here is the skin. So first we have the skin, then underneath that we have the subcutaneous connective tissue. So after that we have this layer of muscle. And the muscle, what muscle is it that we would most largely see in on the eyelid? It would be the orbicularis oculi muscle. And... Here I'm drawing, I've drawn that and this muscle is actually a striated muscle so that's why I've drawn it with striations over here and that is the striated muscle that is found beneath the subcutaneous connective tissue. Then below that we have another layer and that's the submuscular layer and what's more important to um, discuss now is that we also have this kind of sheath, right, this sheath of muscles coming in for our levator superioris muscle and that levator superioris muscle is basically going to attach into this tarsal plate over here the this is the tarsal plate and what's what's important about the tarsal plate is it's a rigid structure and this rigid structure also can it's it provides rigidity and support for the eyelid also, it allows for glands to be there, which we'll discuss a, li a little bit later on. And here is the attachment of the aponeurosis. Remember, I told you we have a levator superior palpebris superioris muscle, but the aponeurosis is what initially actually does attach to this tarsal plate over here. Now, this tarsal plate is very important because we'll look at different diseases that are to do with the dysfunction there. Over here, you can see the same thing. You can say the same thing. And here, you have to remember that on the most outer side, you will see the skin on top of the eyelid, on the most outer aspect. And on the most inner aspect, you will see the conjunctiva, the conjunctiva over here. Then beneath the skin, you can see the subcutaneous tissue. Then you can see the striated muscle. And what I was trying to demonstrate over here with the levator palpebrae aponeurosis, superioris aponeurosis, was just how this was the skin, this was the subcutaneous tissue. What was this? Skin. What was this? Subcutaneous tissue. What was this muscle, striated muscle? What I was trying to demonstrate was that here on top of the striated muscle and also this tarsal plate over here was the attachment. Here's the attachment of the tendon of levator palpebrae superioris muscle. Excuse me. And over here, below the tarsal plate, we would expect to see our glands, okay? We would expect to see our meibomian glands, which secrete this oil lipid layer, okay? So let's continue on and see what's next. Yep, so the most inner lining would be the conjunctiva, okay? So here is another diagram of the eyelid, just to demonstrate this again. The tarsal plate is over here. This is the tarsal plate. And um, within the tarsal plate, there's a space which contains glands. And we have three different types of glands in the eyelid. And those are the meibomian glands, like these here, these ones. Then... Um, then we also have glands of mole and glands of zeiss, but remember those don't have those are not associated with the tarsal plate. Within the tarsal plate, the most important thing you have to remember is the meibomian glands, and these are very important for diseases of the eyelid because they secrete the oil and lipid layer which covers the tears. Okay. Now here again, just to remind you, we have skin number one, then we have two subcutaneous tissue, which is not demonstrated here. Three, we have the striated muscle, four, submuscular tissue, five, the tarsal plate, six, the obviously the attachment of the aponeurosis would have been here, the levator palpebris superioris, um, 
muscle aponeurosis would attach here. Then we would have um, the conjunctiva as well and those important things. So that is a closer look at the tarsal plate. The tarsal plate is this rigid part of the eyelid. It's 15 hours. And it is important for the glands as well as rigidity. And this is what I was telling you about. The, out of the tarsal plate, you can di directly see the meibomian glands here that I've demonstrated. But on the within the eyelid itself, you can see the glands of Zeiss and the glands of Moll. And these are also important when we consider different diseases of the eyelid, okay? But luckily, there's only three glands you need to remember. Remember this, what is the name of this gland, which is directly coming from the tarsal plate? the meibomian glands, then you have also glands of Zeiss and glands of Moll. Sorry for that interruption. Skin, connective tissue, striated muscle, submuscular layer, then you should have tarsal plate, levator palpebri aponeurosis, and then the conjunctiva is the most inner lining. Okay, thank you for watching. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed and I will see you for the next video.